Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Yes. Yep. It's a funny thing, communications, isn't it? It uses some of the most amazing technology in the world today. And there's one company, one company, who've got the lot. That's right, British Telecom. Satellites, optical fibres, telex, fax, computers, Maureen Lippmann. You name it, they've got it. But have you ever actually tried talking to them? I have. My phone line has recently been doing the old Rice Krispies audition. So I thought I'd give them a call. Anyway, who do you phone? Well, who do you phone? You phone the operator. Hello, British Telecom. Hello. I've got a lot of noise on my line. Sorry, sir. Could you say that again? There appears to be a lot of noise on the line. I know, and I'd like to get it fixed, please. Certainly. Just hold on, sir. I'm just putting you through. Uh, 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 six hours later. Uh, hello. I've got a lot of noise on my line. Oh, uh, thank you, sir. Just uh, putting you through to the engineers. Who is that? Have you ever noticed there's always someone extra that you've got to get through to first before you can actually get through to who you want to speak to? Who are they? Anyway, I get through to the engineers, and they say they'll look into it for me, always dubious. So I thought, if they're coming round, I'll get them to put in that extension phone I've always wanted in the bedroom. Well, I work better in bed, or what I've been told. Thank you, Tina. So I suggest this to him, and he says, uh, no, sorry, sir. We don't handle that here. This is the team out of the RSC. You want sales? Oh, do I? <laughs> Look, have I woken up in Albania or something? This is BT, isn't it? Why can't you help me? Uh, because I'm an engineer, sir. This isn't sales. You want sales. What can you put me through, please? Oh, uh, no, sorry. We can't do that from here, so you'll have to go back to the switchboard. <sighs> so, I ring up the operator again. Hello, British Telecom. Hello, I'd like to speak to Sales, please. Just putting you through, sir. Hello, Sales. Did you want to speak to Sales, sir? Yes! So at last, I get through to Sales, only to discover that having worked out what phone I want, they cannot tell me whether they've got it, nor whether they can come round to put it in. By this time, I feel like telling them where they can put it in as well. Anyway, I just remembered my last phone bill was three times higher than normal. I don't remember getting a teenage daughter for Christmas. So I asked him this, and he says, Uh, no, sorry, sir, this is sales. You need accounts. Well, can you put me through, please? Uh, no, sorry, we can't do that from here, sir. You'll have to go back to the blaming switchboard. <laughs> you know, it's supposed to be us they answer to, but you can never find out who to ask. Amazing. It seems to me they spend much too much time communicating to actually listen. That's not strictly true, you know. What? Uh, talk with cut, 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 love. A few years back, BT ran an extensive in-depth survey into what customers thought of them. Yes, and I'll bet they got some interesting answers as well. Well, it seems some people weren't happy. Some people weren't happy? What a surprise. And what they were mostly not happy about was trying to contact BT on the phone. There it is, straight from the horse's mouth. Well, as I was saying... So, they decided to do something about it. Oh, yes? Yes. And if you'll get up off your high horse, I'll tell you about it. I'm trying to do a show here, actually. Up till now, a customer's records have been held by the various departments on different systems. For example, your name, address and telephone number could be held by up to 16 separate systems, all unconnected and incompatible. Information could only pass between departments over the phone or by internal post. This meant that each system generated its own mountain of paperwork. For example, if you wanted to order a phone, the sales department would have to send out nine copies of the sales order to all the relevant departments for them to update their records and do the work. And of course, each of these departments generates its own paperwork in response. I shouldn't think any of this speeds up the process of getting the phone to the customers, does it? No, especially not if the customer wants to change anything later. But, of course, all this paperwork causes its own problems. Lights. For example, an accounts clerk may need to gain information from bill summaries, meter readings, weekly payout reports, follow-up action sheets, altogether over 14 sources of information that they need to do their work. 
No wonder there are no trays left in Scandinavia. Indeed. And it didn't make finding a customer's information a particularly rapid process. It all seems totally unworkable to me. Well, surprisingly enough, it did work. But it was inefficient and didn't give customers a responsive service. And you have to remember the scale of the problem. Good afternoon, Rachel Summerson Sales. Throughout the country, British Telecom has more than 22 million telephone customers making 70 million phone calls a day. And every day, BT receives at least 100,000 service inquiries from those customers. That's as well as my be. But we all have our problems, and it's the customer who suffers. So you better get your problems fixed. Very true. And BT decided that the only way to help the customer would be to replace all these systems, handling all this work with one system that did the lot. Mm, yes, that might help, but I'll believe it when I see it. Well, then, believe it. Welcome to Customer Service Systems. It's a VDU. My brother's got one of these to charge his train spotting. I've seen VDUs before. I'm sure you have. But this VDU is connected to CSS. One system that does everything all those previous systems did. You mean one system can create that many cock-ups? If this system does everything, surely it's going to be too complicated to use. Not at all. Because at heart, it's simply a single common database that all the relevant departments have access to in a very simple and flexible way. Simple? Yes. Well, when I say simple, it is the largest civil computer project in the world. And thus, it's amazingly complex. But it's the complexity that makes it flexible. And to use is the piece of cake. OK. Show me. Certainly, sir. What is your telephone number? Uh, my telephone number is... Ah, yes. The ubiquitous Mr. John Smith. Now, Mr. Smith, how can I help you? Uh, I'd like one of your wonderful BT extension phones, please. Certainly, sir. What sort of phone would you like? A red one, to go with the helicopter wallpaper in my bedroom. All right. Would you like anything else? Ten number memory? Last number redial? Uh, being the aspiring yuppie that I am, I'll have all of that, please. Thank you. Well, sir, for you, we have the Slimtel 10. A mere snip at £3.30 per quarter. And would next Wednesday afternoon be convenient for the installation? No. Uh, Thursday morning, please. Certainly, sir. I'll have the engineers round to you on Thursday morning. Thank you for calling, sir. Uh, 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 before you go, don't hang up. What about my bill? Of course, sir. But before I do that, notice that I didn't have to send out all those sales orders to all those departments telling them that I'd just sold a phone. Having completed the transaction, that information is now in there on the database, on the files that all those departments use. And the wheels are already turning. Now, sir, you had an inquiry about your bill. Yes. I've just received a bill that was considerably up on the last one, and I demand to know why. Well, your last bill covered the period over Christmas and the New Year. And if I refer back to the same period last year, I can see that the bill was for a very similar amount. That's, that's as well as may be, but, I mean, what about all of the snap, crackle and pop on, on my line? Well, if I just do a quick line test, I can see where the problem is. It's on the line. That information has now been passed through to the engineers, and it should be fixed within the next 48 hours. Will there be anything else, sir? No, I think that just about wraps it up. Thank you very much for calling, sir. Don't hesitate to call again. So you see, through this one terminal, I can handle all your queries. There's no need to shunt you about from department to department. Well, OK, OK. This is all very well as a, as a bench test prototype. But when will the, the public uh, experience this, this new revelation? They already do. This is a CSS front office. These people are dealing with an average of 2,000 calls a day. 
And whatever the inquiry, the customer gets straight through to here by calling one simple number. Which is probably engaged. Not at all. All incoming calls are queued. The caller hears a ringing tone, which is usually answered within a few seconds. The people here are the first that the customer talks to, and in nearly every case, that first person can deal with a whole inquiry. Uh, uh, nearly every case? What happens if they can't? Then the customer is quickly passed on to a more specialist department, who will also have access to the CSS database and the same customer information. Details of each inquiry are added to the customer's records, so that if he calls again, he doesn't have to explain all his previous inquiries. Ah, that takes all the fun out of it. CSS will allow staff to handle fault reports, carry out line tests, and book engineers' visits. All this information is held on a local mainframe computer, which can handle up to 600 users simultaneously and get through 550,000 transactions in a working day. It uses the latest storage system. Each disk holds 2,500 million characters and can read or write 3 million characters a second which gives the computer a response time of 0.6 of a second. Of course, what this means is that staff and customers aren't kept hanging around for information. Well, I'm very glad to hear it. One big advantage of the system is that managers will have access to customer information in a much more useful form than before, enabling them to keep a close eye on how well customers' inquiries are being dealt with. Now, that is a good idea. Yes, I thought you'd like that one. But essentially, the point of the system is that it enables one person to deal with nearly any customer inquiry. And by making our jobs easier, it allows us to give the customer a better service. It's very good for the, for the public, for the image, because they feel then that we're very efficient and we have all the information we need on hand. I enjoy working because, as I say, instead of having loads of things on paper, you've got it all on screen. You can go back and forth and you can, if you're in one, a transaction you can save it and go somewhere else come back to the other one which I found very useful uh, if someone rings and says oh I'm moving will you uh, send my final account uh, all right will you put me through now so that I can have the line cut off as well and so oh, I can deal with that as well um, or if someone reports a fault and they say um, oh um, how about having a rebate now for the time I've been out of order so oh, I'll deal with that and um, they're quite surprised sometimes that they, you know, you can actually deal with so many different aspects. So there you have it. One point of contact going directly through to one person who has instant access to all the customer's relevant information, giving that customer a responsive and satisfying service. OK. But I haven't experienced this service yet. How many people are actually connected up to it? Well, in many parts of the country, the system is already up and running, and by the end of the decade, all customers will be served by CSS. I've done it, haven't I? Done what? I have just entirely ruined your act. You've got nothing to complain about now. Mm, I'm sure I'll think of something. Later on, we'll be talking to Alexander Graham Bell about CSS's stablemate, the diesel-driven radio pager. <laughs>